We're here for our series on working AI, and today we're talking about build versus buy. Um, and I'm joined by Alice and Blair. I'll have you both introduce yourselves. Alice, let's start with you. I'm Alice. Uh, I'm on the Connector Engineering team. I've been here at Glean a while, so I know a bit what it's like to build something like Glean. And I'm Blair Henley Frank. I'm one of the members of our product marketing team. I've been at Glean for a few years and spent that time working with our product team as well as our customers to understand how Glean fits into the market um, as well as how the market can better fit into Glean. Alice, because you have had some experience building Glean, I wanted to turn it over to you to start. How do you approach answering the age old question, should you build or buy technology? That's a great question. So when you're thinking of building versus buying any kind of technology, you really need to consider three different costs. The upfront build costs, the maintenance costs, and the opportunity costs. Let's take building something like Glean as an example. Glean connects to and understands all of your company's data. It generates answers and automates workflows that is grounded in your organization's knowledge. So to build something like Glean, you need to go beyond just hiring engineers. You need specialized people who understand search, infrastructure, machine learning, data, and you need these engineers to build scalable and secure systems. A lot of our customers have over 30 data sources and they have hundreds of millions of documents. Building something like that, to even crawl just a percentage of that, could take months. Maintenance costs are often overlooked. One of our customers is a global ride-sharing company, and they actually built an enterprise search product in-house. They spent years maintaining it painfully, and they realized that the cost far outweighed the benefits that it was actually giving their users. Eventually, they replaced it with Glean, and they saw a 2x increase in the amount of usage. Consequently, they actually made AI and search a lot more significant and useful within their company. Lastly, there are opportunity costs. You have to ask yourself, what could my engineers be doing if they weren't building and maintaining a work AI in-house? Another one of our customers is a grocery delivery service, where search and AI is actually very core to their product experience. But they decided that they wanted to use Glean to build their internal work AI because they wanted to divert their engineering resources to building things that would differentiate their product. So when thinking about build first buy for any tech, consider these three costs and ask yourself, Will building this in-house actually drive revenue for me? Good question. So you gave a couple of customer examples, which, which I love. And one of the things that I found pretty interesting when I joined Glean is that there are a number of customers that came from a build scenario and decided to go ahead and buy. I'm curious, from your standpoint, why do you think this question comes up? So this comes up a lot because there's a common misconception that it is very straightforward and simple to build something like Glean. You just crawl the data, you put in a vector database, and then you plug that all into an LLM. Making that all work very well is a very hard problem. So let's look at just the indexing part. You can't really use the search APIs because a lot of data sources don't have them. And if they do, they're very low quality. That means that you're gonna have to wrestle with a long tail of edge cases, ever-changing APIs, and quota restrictions across all these data sources. Then there's search, which ties it together all this data and makes it meaningful to your user. But to build good search, it requires specialized talent to discover insights, refine them, test them thousands and thousands of times. Then lastly, there's leveraging LLMs in a way that is actually useful. LLMs are non-deterministic, so it requires a lot of techniques like fine-tuning, prompting, and evaluation methods. Glean is able to test and deploy new models all the time and quickly because we've invested so much in this area and we're paying the cost across all of our customers rather than just one. There's another area that drives a lot of the decision for folks to consider building. And I think it's around customization of how can you understand my company's language? Um, and also security, because when you're searching, you're searching across a lot of enterprise data. How does Glean approach solving both of those problems? Right, so for customization and security, uh, three techniques that are typically used to address these concerns are hybrid search, knowledge graphs, and strict permissioning. Glean has all three built in. So for hybrid search, Glean combines vector search and keyword search because these are better at different things. Vector search is very good at broad queries, like how do I solve this support issue? And keyword search is better at specific queries, like what are the details about this project? We combine these two and we also merge in user interaction data and we provide results that are customized for your organization. 
Next, we have knowledge graphs. Glean has built a cross-application knowledge graph, which links content, people, and activity all together to build the context for your organization. So if I'm an employee who lives in Europe and I'm looking for the PTO policy, Glean knows to surface the European policy rather than the US one because of that context. Lastly, there's strict permissioning, which Glean approaches on a micro and a macro level. On a micro level, every single document reflects its native permissions. So if I don't have access to a document natively, I won't be able to see it in Glean. Glean also propagates permission changes immediately, so we don't have to worry about permission leaks. On a macro level, Glean offers flexible hosting options, such as Glean hosted or self-hosted in your own cloud. So with enterprise authentication and a secure single tenant SaaS model, you can be sure that your data is safe within Glean and never leaves your deployment. Thank you, Alice. I really appreciate that context. Blair, you've also looked at this from more of an ROI standpoint. Can you share your findings? Should you build or buy? Yeah, it's a really interesting question. And as you said, it's something that a lot of our customers struggle with as they're evaluating Glean and as they're thinking about what makes sense for their work AI posture. And so what we did is we actually reached out to Forrester Consulting in 2024 to do a total economic impact analysis. And their total economic impact methodology is basically a toolkit for understanding how the adoption of a technology within an organization is ultimately going to impact that organization. They spoke to four of our customers, global enterprises across multiple different industries, including data storage, telecommunications, and data management, and used that to construct what they call a composite organization. This is an organization that takes into account all of the information from those interviews and provides a holistic picture of what Glean could be like for another customer. And so in this case, the composite organization is a 10,000 person global enterprise um, with billions of dollars in revenue. And what they found was that the impact that Glean had just on their technology spending was really significant. Over their three-year analysis, Forrester Consulting found that Glean was able to save the composite organization $1.3 million in technology costs alone. What that meant was that they actually went and they talked to our customers and those customers said, yeah, we were able to decommission specialized search systems that were locked into particular departments. They were able to turn away from search and generative AI initiatives that they had previously been contemplating building in-house. And Forrester found that that was able to save those companies hundreds of thousands of dollars every year. Moreover, that's a rather conservative estimate compared to what you might see from an organization that is trying to fully duplicate Glean's capabilities. If you take, for example, that uh, ride-sharing company, they were spending millions of dollars on their homegrown search system before they brought in Glean. And we were able to provide them with significant value and offload a lot of that responsibility from their internal teams. So you've spoken a, a bit about the technology savings, which is a huge part of this ROI, but there are other additional benefits that came through in this analysis as well. Could you speak to those too? Yeah, absolutely. What Forrester found was that for the composite organization, they estimated a total net present value of $15.6 million. That represents an, a return on investment of 141% for that composite organization, which is really significant, especially when you look at what that means on a person-by-person -person basis. Forrester Consulting, for example, estimated that Glean could save up to 110 hours per user per year, and that's not counting the additional 36 hours worth of savings that they estimated for new employee onboarding. One of the customers that they spoke to said that actually their new customer support team members who joined after they implemented Glean were actually showing better results than their more experienced team members. And they attributed a lot of that success to their usage of Glean from day one and the fact that they hadn't had to build other potentially bad habits or at least more time consuming habits around finding and leveraging information. All told, 
What we see is a really significant impact across the organization, both in terms of those sorts of quantifiable benefits around time savings, as well as less quantifiable benefits. Another one of our customers said that they saw Glean being something that their employees won't want to relinquish now that they have it. If they tried to turn off Glean, they expected that they would see people actually leaving the company for another organization that uses Glean. To close out, I, you know, I'd love to talk a little bit more about how do we put this question to rest. We've examined it from a technology standpoint, an ROI standpoint. Can we come to some conclusion? Yeah, I think that there's a really clear answer from a financial perspective, which is that what we've been able to demonstrate through this research that we commissioned from Forrester, as well as what we see every day from our customers, is that they see significant benefits from Glean without having to take on the responsibilities of running a system like ours themselves in-house. And especially as the global technology ecosystem is changing so rapidly with generative AI, it's very important for companies to remain agile and to leverage really great partners along that journey so that they can be more successful and ultimately drive better results. Thank you both, I appreciate it. Thank you.